Velma, the show where she gets jiggy on a pole for her father. Oh yes, you've got this coming up later. You thought that was too far? You thought they would never push that line? Well, have I got news for you. And that's far from the only thing. You see, Wired thinks that Velma is the internet's new punching bag, but the problem is her legacy. The problem is you. They say that when a snarky, petty, self-righteous person shows up, people just weren't ready for it. All because they felt ownership over the Scooby-Doo franchise. Don't you understand? This isn't your IP, and that's the problem. And the higher-ups at Warner Brothers Animation have been telling Grandy that no matter what you do, there's always going to be people that hate this. So you should just do whatever you want and completely ignore all of the audience. We're the ones that will be your restraint. Well, whoever said that has cost the company a lot of money. It's not exactly something I would be bragging about if I was you. But they did say that no matter how vocal the critics are, it's going to be up to the next generation to determine if they actually made a mistake. And given my age, some of you will be the next generation. So it turns out we can immediately find the answer to that down in the comments below. But Velma truly is a unifying force across the internet, with even the Beatles family coming in and calling it cringe. We get told that even Velma and Daphne getting together can't save this series. I mean, sure, that was such a massive benefit, it could have made up for a huge amount of flaws. But even that can't save this. The Atlantic says that Velma has crossed the line, that its real problem is its attitude towards viewers, despite the fact that their own article attacks the fans themselves. But the criticism isn't universal. There is one shining beacon across the internet, one final person that actually enjoys Velma. Over on Out, Velma continues to defy the haters and gets better every episode. Velma has been hated with the passion of a thousand people who want to keep the 20 bucks in their wallet. The problem that people have with this show is that it's created by a woman who likes to talk, and they're looking for any excuse to hate on that. So there you have it. According to them, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the show. Nothing wrong with this at all. I can't imagine what anyone could possibly have a problem with. Well... Let's dig in and find out, shall we, in Velma episode 6. If there's one thing teen dramas get right, it's that nothing is ever actually a teenager's fault. No, it's 100% your fault. You make your own decisions, you're accountable for your own actions. We're all really just paying for the sins of our parents. The entire point of life is that you can be better than where you came from. That's the end goal. They're either lying to us. <gasps> Velma, this entire show has been lying to the audience constantly. Either knowingly lying or evil. Pick one. Oh yeah, you discover that Polonia. Trying to change us. To be fair, after that, he needed to be changed. You can't go, oh, we're paying for the sins of our parents, and then when they try to make you better, go, oh, you can't change me. I'm perfect just the way I am. No, you're probably lazy, disgusting, and horrible. The point is you don't need to be. Because I am, but I don't need to be. <laughs> if Velma hallucinates while learning the truth about Grandma, she could die. Whoa, don't give me hope. I can't take it again. She died in the last episode and came back. I'm not sure I could handle the disappointment twice. But when it comes to deluded, selfish, entitled, ungrateful people, Obviously, no one tops the charts more than Velma. But when it comes to truly crappy parents, no one beats my dad. Absolutely no one could be a worse parent than her father. Brought her up alone, give a roof over her head. She's absolutely never suffered for food or entertainment, education or resources in any way, shape or form. She's had everything she could ever want right in her room. He's done his best for her and she still doesn't appreciate it at all. Oh no, we actually got into another relationship after his daughter, which hasn't kicked out the house, scared the mum away because she's so repulsive. And sure, the show's trying to deny that, but come on, we've met Valma, we know the truth. But with his girlfriend having a kid, Valma's father has decided to take paternity leave because he doesn't want to mess up that one. He's already learned from Valma, you shouldn't do that twice. And obviously Valma is incredibly happy that her father is trying to be the best dad that he can be. Paternity leave? When I was born, or you doubled your work hours. Let's face it, she's lucky even sleeps in the house with her malevolent presence invading his dreams. Or risk messing her up the way he messed up, well, you know, based economy. Later, Fred offers Velma a lift to school because he wants someone who looks like they fell from heaven and landed on their face. Absolutely not, Frederick. Unless this is your selection for our hunt. Remember, this is the episode which is all about how terrible fathers are. Every single one has an absolutely horrible dad. And yet, despite that being the theme of the episode, 
Fred's dad keeps making a lot of sense. Have you heard of inner beauty? That's a myth, you fool! I told you, he makes a lot of sense. Look, if you think that beauty isn't skin deep, just imagine how you'd look without that skin. I don't know, if Velma goes on long enough, maybe we'll find out. Well, at least my relationship with my father isn't that bad. She literally said that no man is worse than her father until a guy came along and said, you know that beauty, mate? It's probably in her face. And immediately, that opinion alone is enough to make you worse than the worst person alive in Velma's eyes. <laughs> Get what you deserve. Go help Velma not hallucinate. Don't let her push you around. You're your own man. Just real quick, when do you need me to have your pants mended by? Look, we didn't bring back all of these traditional characters. And I know. Just so we could humiliate them. We wouldn't do that. No, no. That's just a theory online that all those trolls came out with on Twitter and stuff. You should ignore those. Don't believe your lying eyes. They're lying to you. But Velma talks to Norville's mom about her mom. Her mother was a neurosurgeon who discovered how to keep the human brain alive outside of a body. And for some reason, she wasn't horrified by this. I never should have been an organ donor. Because everyone else is horrified by this. Even she knows she got caught and shouldn't be doing this, but apparently everyone just carried on anyway because we're all evil. We're gonna try and blame it on the general when really, she's entirely to blame for even doing this in the first place. Why was she showing this off as if it was a great thing? The brain is screaming, I never should have done this, I'm in hell. And it was like, yeah, just carry on. We're gonna do this to other people. I can't see any problems here, ethically. This will be fine. The general saw its potential in making a new group of spies. Because he needed to spy on the greatest threat to American society. Oh, let me guess. Communists? Meat made from plants? Women's sports? Don't be stupid, Velma. Nobody watches women's sports. How could that be a threat to anything? No. Meddling kids. Wait, hang on, isn't this just the first group that she mentioned? Communist? But the general himself tried to spy on them, except he just kept getting caught. Not only were his signs obvious, but he also couldn't replicate their incredibly complicated hand signals, like the peace sign. Always foiled him with a technique called mask pulling. Yeah, I may have forgotten this bit was coming. This is where they try and tie this show into Scooby-Doo. You know, the actual IP, not whatever parasitical organism Velma is. Because that's not the only time they try and link it into Scooby-Doo. After he tries to hypnotize people into working for him as spies, which doesn't work because people would click at them and it would deprogram them. I don't know, that just seems like a really obvious flaw you could have solved, but apparently, no. If hypnosis doesn't work, I've got to transfer someone's brain into a kid. That's the only option left. He called the program the Special Covert Operations Brain Initiative. And yes, they've had to use the first two letters of the second word just to try and make it make sense. And it ends in an I rather than a Y, most likely because they were too thick to come up with an acronym that actually made sense. Don't worry, if we just change the word to something that it isn't, that'll be fine. Oh, and like all of this show, if you thought that this was bad, <laughs> it gets worse. I present to you... Scooby? And wait, what did Scooby do? How come your reviews take two days to come out, even though it's a 25-minute episode? This. This is why. What do you do after you finish watching Velma? Well, I generally watch TV from an entirely different region of Earth. Because at least over there, people get hired based on merit. But it turns out, despite being able to keep a brain alive outside of somebody's body, she couldn't actually transfer them into another person's body. So she kept trying for years and years and years until she eventually went crazy. And absolutely nothing shows that you're crazy more than looking for the truth. But despite the show saying that this woman was completely insane, she decided herself to brick up her own laboratory, give her journals away to someone who would hide them for her so that nobody else could replicate her research, and then voluntarily commit herself to an insane asylum. This is someone who is apparently insane, and yet is taking very logical actions in order to make sure that nobody else falls for her research. I don't know, it just seems incredibly logical. It must be because she doesn't have dangly bits. That's your mom. Playing God, removing brains. That's some white people sh you are absolutely repulsive, Velma. You really are. But Velma is a huge intellect, a master detective. And so she puts things together that nobody else could. My mom disappeared after finding Dr. Purdue's journals, and the dead girls all had their brains removed. Could they be connected? Wait, my mom uncovered research about removing people's brains, and then people's brains started being removed? Maybe these two things could be linked! Remember, writers write at their intellect level. They think that that is a complicated mystery. There's absolutely no way the audience could have put these two things together. Wow, for all your personality flaws, you're actually a pretty good detective. I mean, I would have said that sarcastically to take the piss, but the show is being serious. Our reality is now merged with parody until you can't tell the difference between the two of them, and sarcasm is just 
the world. Wow, you are truly a great detective. No, it thinks she is. If you start taking my lines from me, I don't know where I go from here. <laughs> but don't worry, she's got a box that will just tell Velma everything she needs to know. Because Velma in this show isn't a detective, she just randomly stumbles over people that tell her the story. She doesn't actually do any of the work for this herself, she's just given everything on a silver plate that she doesn't deserve. It's basically how the writers of this got their jobs. Of course she hallucinates because we can't work out the problem that easy, ah oh, yes. In this show, the difficult part of the mystery isn't the logic to work it out. It's that you're such a self-obsessed brat, your personality disorders get in the way. But Daphne goes through the mines and meets her parents. They're mining all the crystal ore so they can ship it off and make a fortune. Cut back to Velma and she's had an adrenaline shot in the wrong place. For some reason it's been put up on her shoulder. Now as far as I know, these things are meant to be put into your heart, but that probably doesn't matter for Valma because she doesn't have one. <gasps> what happened? Why is there a needle in my good boot? One's always better than the other, every guy knows this. Sometimes you can't sleep and you get bored. What can I say, the rating system's a lot more accurate than IMDB. We also get this poster on the wall that says your brain is replaceable. Muscles look tasty, but is important. Hearts are breakable and bones are also breakable. This is a high school teaching at the level of a two-year-old, which is what the creators feel like this cartoon is pitched at. But Velma can't go through life hallucinating, and yet the hallucinations are caused because she's such a horrible person to everybody, and so she's looking for some kind of cure. So Velma, in the ultimate act of entitlement, decides rather than just accepting responsibility for scaring her mom off, and curing the hallucinations by using them as an impetus for change, a reason to become a nicer, more moral person, she's instead going to fully embrace modernity, and palm the blame off onto somebody else. Because while her first hallucination was when she went hunting for her mom. Something else did happen that day. My dad took me out to breakfast for the first time ever. It's her dad's fault, everybody. How come I was such a massive ass that I scared my mom off? And now I'm going around the world and I'm having delusions and I'm hallucinating, which is causing me problems. Couldn't be my fault. That's the responsibility of someone with dangly bits. I've been looking for mom and I think I have some new leads. Velma, your mother wasn't taken. She left us. Yeah, it's all his fault because he was hitting me in the face with hard factual reality when I'm living in this delusional land of desperately trying to pretend I'm not a bint. I'm sure the show will try to retcon a history about how he actually did it, but Velma actually had memories of her scaring her mum off, so I believe her. Wait, I've always wanted my dad to love me more. Have you considered not being an insufferable bint? That might be a good start. If you wanted him to treat you like a nice person, have you ever considered being a nice person? Saying your mom was kidnapped upsets your dad and just makes it harder for him to love you. We're gonna jump through 17 logical loops in order to try and not take accountability for our own actions. Couldn't be my fault. I've never taken responsibility for anything in my entire life. Can't imagine why nobody likes me. Oh no, I hallucinate because I have daddy issues. Yeah, that's her main conclusion. That's actually the key to the mystery of the show. And if we try and work out all of the list of issues that you have, we'll be here all day, love. If you are so desperate to avoid responsibility for your own actions that you will hallucinate yourself to death, we need to put you up in a straitjacket and lock you in a padded cell, love. These are the least of your problems. Gross. You are gross, Valma. I'll give you that one. Don't search for daddy issues and teenage girls. Bookmark. HBO, everybody. But we are far from the main problem here because if Velma wants to live in this delusional fantasy realm where she's not responsible for her own problems, then somebody else must be. If your hallucination started because your dad doesn't believe your mom was kidnapped, it'd stop if you make him believe she was kidnapped. Yeah, if you're such a lunatic and so desperate to avoid accountability, that you will just create an entire fantasy world in your mind, then all you have to do is brainwash everyone else in the world into believing your false reality, and then we could just live in a fantasy world together in perfect harmony. It makes total sense. I can't believe why we don't do this more. I try, but whenever I mention it, he shuts me down. Why won't everyone else in the world believe my lies? I can't understand. We get Norville's story arc of how he just really gets on well with his parents. Even though he's the one who basically taught you to be a beta? Based economy. It is weird how Valmo drops these truth bombs on other people, but never herself, isn't it? Need a hand. Of course, Dad, heavy lifting is exactly what alphas do. We're helping your mom's old boyfriend move. Truth bombs for everyone else except Velma. Her dad, though, has realized that paternity leave isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's like having a dog and barking yourself, so he decides to go off and spend time with Velma as an excuse to get out the house. Daphne is getting taught about the secret power of crystals from her father. It treats anxiety. It. You take it and bang it on your head. Really? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a live action replay on how the idea for this show came about. But a parent's gang is going to be rich because all these crystals used to be worthless and now 
Now they're back in fashion. Thanks to underemployed millennials, ex-reality stars, believing in crystals is back, baby! We can this is the show laughing at how gullible their own target demographic is. <laughs> you're so thick and stupid, and we know that because you're watching this crap. If you had a brain, there's no way you would have made it to episode 6, so we know you're definitely buying this crap. Wait, hang on, the main victims of this show are people with no brains. And yet, those are also the only people that can survive this series. Maybe this whole plot arc is just HBO victimizing their audience. Consume our product and it'll suck your brain out. It's the most honest TV show ever made. We'll tell you why you have orange hair. I smoked during pregnancy. Like, a lot. Okay, but what did you do to remove her soul? Was that done at a party in Hollywood or what? Like, I should be dead. Valma and her father have gone back to the old cafe they used to visit, and there's something a little bit different about this one. This place has changed since the last time we were here. It's a strip joint, and Valma is still in high school. School. Don't worry, just when you think the show can't get worse, it always does. This isn't even the low point of the episode, I might add. Totally didn't notice. Sophie told me I can't pee in the shower anymore because that's where she bathes Amanda. Velma's life issues. I can't believe my parents say I can't piss in the bath. Velma is the most repulsive person on television, the most horrible character ever written. Sure, in the past you have people like Galadriel who've been evil, but Velma is like physically repulsive. You are actually disgusting with your beliefs and actions. Now I have to pee in the shower at school like a weirdo. Valma, that isn't what makes you weird. That's just the icing on the cake. Now during this entire scene are things that I, I don't think I can even show you, so this is a bit difficult to cover. Luckily, not much actually happens in this scene. It's just meant to be Valma bonding with her dad at a strip club. She even calls it one of the best days out they've ever had. To stop my hallucinations, I need you to believe me that mom was kidnapped. To stop my hallucinations, I just need you to join me in this entire fake fantasy world I've created in my own head. If we all just believe my delusions, we can live together in harmony in this new utopia. This is Hollywood saying, forget the real world, forget objective reality. Just all join us in our delusions. It'll be amazing. Can't a father and daughter just enjoy a nice meal at a strip club without it being awkward? No. Which is probably why I'm gonna have to alter this entire scene so that you didn't just see what I had to see. But her dad's a busy guy. He's got to go out to earn money, to put the roof over her head and pay for everything. Velma is so entitled. She's like, can't you just be unemployed and make me the center of the universe until we eventually starve to death? through homelessness. All of Velma's issues stem from the fact that he's a good father who's actually providing for her. Oh, so you're going to work, are you? Well, then call me Ernest Shackleton, because I'm headed to a poll. Yep, Velma decides, if my father needs to work so that he can pay for my food, then I'm going to get on a pole instead. Now, I did briefly think that they might actually have a line and this would be the one they wouldn't cross because Fred gets involved. Unfortunately, no, Fred's just here because his dad is trying to straighten him out and make him realize that don't you understand what Velma is? You need better taste. Dad found out I like you and is now trying to normalize my brain. As I said, the show tries to make out that Fred's dad is horrible, but if he realizes you like Velma, there must be something wrong with you. We need to fix your mental problem. Then I'm all for it. After that, Velma continues with her original plan, gets on top of the bar, and this goes exactly where you think it's going. Oh yeah, keep it all on. Show me nothing, baby. The guy is even face palming and weeping into his own hands at just how low he is sunk as a human being in this scene. At that moment, her horrified dad walks back in, and I'm gonna show you the entire picture, because the reactions of people in this scene are incredible. You've still got the guy on the left face palming, and the two on the right are just horrified at what they're witnessing in this bar. This bar which very clearly says 18 plus on it, by the way. I'm doing what every girl is doing up here. I'm just trying to get my dad's attention. For anyone on Twitter that was like, well, her dad's clearly just walked in. Maybe they didn't know that he was going. No, she was specifically on top of that bar to get his attention. She was doing it for him, and she was proud of it. This is the most horrific moment of the show so far, and I don't know how it got signed off by HBO. Velma, stop, you have my attention. Velma, please stop anything, anything. I'll do anything. I'll even believe in your own deluded fantasies if I need to. We don't have to live in the real world anymore. I too will lie to everybody all the time about your past and how disgusting you are. So we get a montage of them spending time together after her dad has been blackmailed into suffering her company. <laughs> I said wait! She's a really, really nice person. Norville sees his dad getting treated like a doormat by every single person on Earth and decides that he doesn't actually want to follow in his sad little footsteps. Where are my pants? Now on, I'm wearing them. Took your time, but at least you got there in the end, mate. Valma and her father go fishing and catch an underwater ghost. I'm mentioning this specifically because the show forgets about it in the same episode. Fred comes by and ruins Valma's carefully constructed delusion. As it turns out, actually, all this time on paternity leave, your dad is 
been working while he's been around you. Turns out he took Velma to that club because he was trying to negotiate and buy one of the dancers' contracts in the desperate hope that she would make Fred have slightly better taste than Valma. Spend your paternity leave with me so you could work. It's called multitasking, and you didn't even realize he was making money, so what's your problem? I can't believe my dad is providing for the family. How disgusting of you. Quite frankly, Valma, the only thing you need is an eviction notice. But Valma's so angry, she's like, maybe this anger will have cured all of my delusions. I don't care about my father anymore, and him not believing in my fantasy world was definitely the cause of my hallucinations. So now I hate him, surely I can look in this box and discover everything about my mom, who left me because I'm a miserable bint. My hallucinations were caused by my desire to make my dad love me. No, your hallucinations were caused by you being so horrible that you scared your mom away. I don't care what the show says, I've seen far too much evidence for that not to be true. And if I don't care what he thinks, then I won't hallucinate. Oh my god, honestly, I was like 0% sure that would work. That's because you knew you were lying, once again living in your own fantasy delusions rather than reality. Yeah, it's definitely his fault, I could be responsible for my own actions. Don't you understand? This is 2023. That couldn't be me. But it turns out the answers aren't in this box at all. This is just another cue for the person in front of her to give her a load of information that she didn't earn, didn't deserve, and didn't work out. It turns out in this show, detectives just walk up to people and then just get told all of the answers in expedition dumps. Her mom's secret lab is underneath Fred's house and Fred bought it after she went into the insane asylum. Velma's mom discovered this and went out in search of the lab and any information she could get about transferring people's brains, which led her to the scientist's journals. So that's why she went to Fred's house when she went missing. It was all to uncover the secret lab. There's only one explanation. Mom opened the lab and... That can be the only explanation. Nothing else on earth could possibly explain it. Obviously, she took down a wall and someone kidnapped her. And let's face it, it was probably a ghost. It 100% couldn't be that she ran off to avoid Valma because Valma was such a horrible person. I mean, all I'm saying on the balance of probabilities, we've got a load of evidence compared to zero. Just a guessing. I know which side I'm on. I thought only idiots and B-list actresses believed in ghosts. Remember when I said I was mentioning something specifically earlier? Yeah, earlier in the episode, Velma and her dad went fishing and caught a ghost out of the ocean. She knows that ghosts are real in this universe. She caught one, she's got proof of one, but suddenly we've just forgotten all about that. The detective with a memory like a sieve can't even remember catching a ghost a few minutes ago. So she goes off in search of her mom. Again, Daphne goes back to her dad, only to find out that he's leaving and he had an ulterior motive. She's just a hostage to cover their escape because her mom's caught them the last time and they don't want the same thing to happen again. If you're wondering what on earth does this have to do with the show, the main plot line, or anything to do with the mystery at all, I have no idea either. But at that moment, her parents appear. I've been on to you since you busted out of jail and put a geode through our daughter's window. So why didn't you arrest them earlier then? Why did you wait until he had a gun pointed at your daughter's face before you arrested him? if you knew where the criminal secret base was all along. All I'm saying is if I found out that my daughter was getting involved with a criminal gang, I wouldn't wait until they were threatening her life to actually, I don't know, stop it. But her parents move in and arrest everybody. I have no idea why they didn't before. One of the gang members uses a camera flash to cause a distraction so they can escape. I'm not joking, they literally kick a camera, the flash goes off, which causes a load of bats to fly around, and she takes that opportunity to run away. Valma goes to Fred's house to look for the secret lab and discovers the lab entrance. It's still closed. If my mom didn't open it, where'd she go? We've been through this, Valma. You're an insufferable cow, and so she ran off and left you because nobody wants to spend a second in your company, even your family. This is why HBO can count the amount of viewers for your series on their hands and feet. You push in a brick and it opens. Fred, wait! Although the show does have its occasional upside when things like that happen to Velma. Daphne realizes that her parents didn't actually steal her from the gang. They just ditched her on the side during their escape and her parents rescued her. And Velma's dad comes to rescue her. Although if I was him, I would have taken the opportunity to seal her up for good. Velma, it's me, the parent who only abandoned you emotionally. Abandoning her physically is basically the least she deserves right now. At this point, how is Velma ever going to learn if she doesn't experience the consequences of her actions? Dad? Wait, did I die and go to hell? No, you've been alive and turning the world into a living hell for everyone who ever meets you. There's a difference. But her dad apologizes. It's like, look, when your mom was around, I had to work so I could provide for the family. But then after she left us, because you scared her away from us with your absolutely horrible, disgusting behavior, well, then I felt guilty about it. And so I threw myself into work and money because I just couldn't bear to be around you. I don't think he did anything wrong. I can't bear to be around Velma either, so I completely sympathize with the poor chap myself. But you wouldn't feel guilty if you just believed she was kidnapped. Just stop living in reality and join me in my delusional fantasy world that I've created for no reason whatsoever. 
even though I know I scared her away. Don't live in objective reality, just join me in this nice, comfy, satisfying lie. I swear, this show is the most mask-off thing in the world. But they go down into the secret base and find footprints on the floor. What's this? Jinkies! Member berries! Oh, it's amazing. Someone wrote member berries on a piece of paper just so I could read it out loud and, and desperately try and make people believe that this is a Scooby-Doo show in any way, shape, or form. At that moment, her hallucinations return and we hope desperately that this is the final one that does her in for good. I need you to believe me that mom was kidnapped or I'm gonna die! Oh no, Dad, I need you to believe me because otherwise I'll die because I'm a complete lunatic. I desperately need to guilt trip you into my fake reality, otherwise you're a horrible person and it's all your fault. So he pretends to believe her because quite frankly, no one could physically believe her. She's a not case. And it doesn't work because he's lying to her, because obviously he is. Someone on the floor going, ah, I need you to believe that I'm actually sane. No, you're not. That's why you're in a padded room. Until he sees the note, he's like, oh, she was kidnapped. This is written in her handwriting, which 100% doesn't prove she was kidnapped. It just proves that she wrote a note at some point. Yes, no one's saying she wasn't in this lab. It only matters whether she was in this lab because someone kidnapped her or she was in this lab because your daughter's an insufferable cow. And we know for sure the last one's true, but that makes the hallucination stop because finally, he too has joined her in a complete insanity. Misery loves company and no one is more miserable than Valma. My hallucinations are finally over! That's a shame because that's put your survival chance drastically higher than it was a few minutes ago. Because when you saw I was willing to die for my truth, you finally came around. My truth, not the truth, my truth because she's lying. She's living in a fantasy delusion that she's created in her own face. The only thing I need in the modern world is for everyone to believe the stuff that I've created in my own head, which absolutely isn't true. The most mask off show ever made. And I don't even know what to say about what I've just witnessed, except it was disgusting, repulsive. It showed things that nobody should ever see and was more honest than I ever expected them to be in places. There are times when someone does something and you think, okay, I think you're doing it for this reason. I think it's all a lie and you're just trying to get people to conform to your will, even though you know what you're saying isn't correct. You just never really expect them to admit it. And yet Velma did. That's why for me, Velma is 100% the most mask off show on television, because it combines all of their ideas and puts them together into one insufferable little package and admits exactly why they did it in the first place. Well, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.